Welcome back to my channel everybody. I'm Winter. If you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe or don't. It's your life. I'm just happy you came over to this side of the internet to spend a couple minutes with me. Thank you. Today's video we're going to talk about hmm, abstinence, celibacy, and sensuality. Yes, 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 yes. If you are new here, my name is Winter. I am 23 years old. I am from New York and I have been abstaining from sex for two years. Yes, I have. What you can call me is basically a born in virgin. Yes. <laughs> I made the choice to abstain um, and enter into that vow of celibacy uh, for myself, it wasn't for religious reasons. It didn't begin um, for religious reasons. And if you are interested in learning more about my celibacy journey, I have an entire playlist about my celibacy journey and I've made numerous videos about my celibacy journey. So please be sure that you uh, tune into those so you can get to know me and my celibacy journey a little bit better. Today's video, as I mentioned previously, is gonna talk about celibacy, abstinence, and sensuality. A lot of people, uh, when they're thinking about becoming, well, when they're thinking about entering into a vow of celibacy or abstinence, they are usually conflicted about whether or not they really wanna do it because they're not sure if they're gonna be a sensual being anymore. And I'm here to say that you absolutely are and that we need to rethink how we are understanding what sensuality is. Because to be sent, to be, you ever just forget a word? I just forgot a word. Um, your sensuality does not have to always be related to like sex or sexual urges or sexual thoughts. Sensuality is to experience your senses. And I want you to really take that in a little bit deeper. Sensuality is to experience your senses. So I've been reading this book. It's a really good book and it's titled, I Almost Forgot About You by Terry McMillan. If you're familiar with Waiting to Exhale, then girl, Read this book. To make a long story short, the book is about a black woman who is in her mid 50s, who is basically having a moment in her life. And she is realizing that she doesn't agree with all the choices she's made in her life. And she enters into this journey where she revisits past lovers and relationships and basically rediscovers herself and figure out who she is in the middle of her life. It's an amazing read, highly recommend. Now, this book is actually what uh, prompted this idea in my head to sit down and have this conversation because I was already thinking about how to approach this topic um, because I, I'm a black woman. I identify as a black woman because I am a black woman. I am a cisgendered, woman so that means I identify with my sex assigned at birth and that gender identity so I am female and that is my sex and I am one I'm a woman that is my gender so I'm a cisgendered black woman and I'm 23 years old and I live in America and I live in the north and I'm from New York so I give you all of that to provide you context because that context is very important because you need to understand the framework in which I am operating in. I have a very specific lens on sensuality and I also have a very specific lens on taking a vow of celibacy and abstaining from sex. I'm also very young. That is just to say be easy on me, I right? Like, ease up. Please don't be uh, typing on. I am, hey, I'm figuring this out. And I'm documenting it because I am I want to build a community of other young black women who are also figuring all of this out. 
I want us to figure it out together because we need support. I know that I need support. And so right now, documenting this journey, being as transparent as I am right now on YouTube is how I am building community and providing myself with support that is outside of myself. And I hope that makes sense. So I was reading the book and I came across the passage and I wanna read that passage to you all. And I really want you, and I'm not gonna read super fast, I'm gonna slow down my cadence. And I want you guys to take the passage in and keep the word sensual and sensuality in your mind. The passage, if you have the book, if you wanna follow along, the passage is on page 13. It begins, on Friday night, I decided to not help Detective Gorin solve any murders. Fuck him. In fact, I don't turn the television on at all. I take a bowl bath. I shave my legs and my underarms. I give myself a mud facial. I pluck my eyebrows. I put on a comfy pair of pink cotton pajamas that I folded. They still smell clean. I fall asleep before 10. On Saturday, I decided not to go to Costco or Home Depot or Target or the grocery store for anything because there's really nothing I needed. I go to the movies. I buy tickets to see You Will Meet a Tall, Dark Stranger, not realizing it's a Woody Allen movie. Mm -hmm. And as usual, it's smart and entertaining, but there's not a single person of color in it. I managed to laugh anyway. Afterward, I walk outside into a nice restaurant and I have lunch. Butternut squash soup and a Caesar salad. When I get home, I decide to reread The Alchemist. What a night. That's the passage that inspired the rest of what I'm about to talk about today. Previously before this passage, she's speaking about how her nightly and weekly routine had become so repetitive, she was like bored with her life. She wasn't experiencing her life. She wasn't experiencing her senses. It's also important to note that she is a two, she's a two time divorcee, if I'm remembering correctly. So, you know, she hasn't, she hasn't been, you know, we, we could say she's been operating in a space of celibacy as well. Um, and, you know, I, I took notes in the book, so I wanna, I, as the kind of reader I am, I take notes. So I have notes in here. And I wrote down that you have to integrate pleasure into your life in order to live a life where you're always experiencing your sensuality because to be sensual is to experience your senses. So, on the next page, uh, she goes into a really, really long, I guess you could say, like it's like her soliloquy of why changing up her weekly routine in such minute ways. Like she didn't really do anything drastic. If you, if you rewind the video and go back and listen to the reading of the passage, all she did was sound like she had a really good self-care weekend, right? But when you think about it, a lot of times I feel like we treat self-care as if it's something you can only be doing on the weekend or it's something you only do, you know, when you're feeling extra down about the week or a certain day. And that's not how I, I feel we should be operating. I think we should be integrating sensuality into our lives. So in order to experience your senses, like to your full potential, that means that a lot of these like self-care things we do for ourselves need to not be one-offs or only on Sundays. We need to integrate those behaviors into our lives. I'm not sure if this was a tweet I saw or a meme or something, but somewhere on the internet, I basically saw, you know, a caption or like a screen grab of something that someone had said where they were speaking to the fact that we often think luxury, um, is exclusive to yachts and million dollars and traveling to Tulum uh, whenever you want. And although those things are luxurious and they are luxury, 
Another part of luxury is just allowing yourself to experience your senses at all time and to integrate luxurious things into your life. Because see, some people's version of luxury means they can just pay the rent every month. That's luxurious, right? That That is living in a way that they would say is outside of their norms. And what I realized, and then this book, she's an optometrist as well. So she makes a lot of money. Like she makes good money, but she really wasn't treating herself at all. And when I think about... <laughs> Being a uh, celibate, people, when I talk to them, people often think I'm, I'm very deprived of sensuality because I'm not exploring the sexual side of my sensuality, which I also will say that is not true, but I do not masturbate. Um, because we'll talk about my, we'll talk about my religious journey in another video, but I do not masturbate. And yes, I am abstinent. And so when I took that vow, I also stopped doing all of those things. I basically, I abstained from all of like sexual activity. The, the most is conversationally. So in conversation, uh, it might get a little, a little caliente, but that's about as far as we're going. Um, but yeah, people often think that people who are abstaining from sex and enter into a vow of celibacy are very depraved of sensuality. Like they, they as if we're suppressing that part of ourselves. And I will actually say uh, entering into a vow of celibacy helped me elevate that part of myself because um, I am taking care of myself so seriously now. I take care of myself so seriously. I mean, in Intensely. Okay, I mean intensely. We are always taking care of ourselves. I know you are taking very good care of yourself, but when you are abstaining because you are waiting for marriage, which is what I am doing, you are, there's this whole part of your uh, routine and activity that may have been normal for you that was like I said, routine, so it was something you did often that you were no longer doing. So what do you do in that time when you take care of yourself and you work on yourself, right? I'm only 23 years old. So right now, my large, my biggest focus in my life is my self-development because in seven years, I'll be 30 and I plan to retire at 30 years old and I have a lot of things I would like to do. But in order to do that, that means I need to intensely and fiercely take care of myself. I can take care of myself in such an intense way where I am forever always the center of my life. I have to decentralize anything in my life that isn't me. And if that sounds selfish, good. Because you know, when you get on a plane, one of the first things they remind you to do and to be is selfish. They say, if anything happens, we need you to take care of yourself first, okay? So you can take care of the person next to you. If you don't take care of yourself first, you absolutely will be of no help and assistance to anybody else on this plane. So what we need you to do is to remember to be selfish and take care of yourself first. It's okay. It's okay to take care of yourself first. Actually, who are you to not take care of yourself first? Why would you not take care of yourself first? And then think, I'm gonna go help somebody else. What type of sense does that make? None at all. And I'm 23 and I'm only just figuring this out. My entire life, I have always centered people in my life. I was never the center of my life. I was never the focus of my life. Everyone else and everything else around me was the center of my life. I have achieved many and many things in my life and I'll say maybe 75% uh, of them, I couldn't care less about them. I couldn't. And when I tell you I've, I've award, a scholarly, I've, I've achieved so much but it doesn't fulfill me and I don't really care about it because it wasn't what I wanted to do. 
but I had been I had been socialized in centering other people that if it was making them happy, then I kept doing that work, even though that work didn't serve me. And this book, I Almost Forgot About You, this novel, I Almost Forgot About You by Terry McMillan is such a wake up call to me as a young woman, a young black woman, because although it's a fictional novel, you know, I still identify with the character. And although the character is in her mid fifties, what she is speaking about is a universal thing. It is, I, I'm not living for myself. And if I'm not living for myself, what am I doing with my, my opportunity here on earth? What am I doing with, with what, what am I doing? It's just like, what am I doing? If I'm, if I'm always doing for other people, what am I doing? And so that's where sensuality comes in and it becomes so important, okay? Just treating yourself to a nice meal is you're being sensual. You are experiencing all of your senses, everything, taste, sight, hearing, you know, smell, everything, everything. You're, you're engaging all of your senses. And when I read, when I read that passage, I realized like, wow, Sensuality doesn't have anything to do with sex. It's, it can be a subset, but that's not what sensuality is. Sensuality is just allowing yourself to really freely experience all of your senses. It means that you wake up every day and you go, I'm going to treat my senses to an experience. I'm going to experience it all today. I'm going to smell everything I can. I'm going to taste all the good things I can taste. I'm going to look at all the beautiful things I can look at. I'm going to, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen to all the beautiful things I can listen to. I'm going to touch all the beautiful things I'm going to, I can touch. You know, like you give your senses an experience. And so that is sensual and yes you have a people i guess people want to say it's pent up sexual energy when you're abstaining but for me it doesn't feel like that <laughs> for me it actually feels like a lot of creative energy like suddenly i i suppose those feelings i had that were that those feelings i had that i was channeling um into sexual expression I'm now channeling yeah I'm now I'm now channeling into creative expression um and although sex is creative I mean create I mean creative in a different way I'm creating different things I started a YouTube channel again but I'm consistent this time and I just wanted to pop on here and just explain that to everyone and I really hope I made some sense to you all because People think that if you're going to abstain from sex and if you're going to be abstinent, if you're going to be celibate, you can't be sensual. And I want to remind you that everything about your very body and being is sensual. It is. Everything about you is, is very sensual. I'll even admit, I've even started dressing much, uh, I guess you could consider it more modestly. Um, and it's really not because I want to like hide anything or, or, get, or I want to be modest. It's just something feels so great about um, seeing the figure of your body um, and not having all of it on display, yet you can outline everything so perfectly. I don't know, that's sensual. Isn't that sensual? You know what I'm saying? Like, isn't that sensual? That is sensual. That's what I'm talking about. Like. Give all of your senses, give every sense that you have access to an experience every single day. That's what it means to be sensual. I think we take words and we, oh my God. It's like, uh, I don't know if this is like America or something, but like we sexualize so many things. And it's just like, that's not even what the word means. Like, how do we get here? How do we, how do we make everything so like overtly sexual? Like, what? Why are we doing that with like every single thing? Like it doesn't, we don't, we really shouldn't be doing this and we don't need to be doing this. But I just wanted to have this conversation and just remind people and also encourage people who are thinking about uh, abstaining, people who are thinking about entering into a vow of celibacy that I'm just, you can be sensual and being sensual has, it has everything to do with your body, but not in the way that you would think. 
And I think that's where the disconnect is coming from. So people sometimes say, oh, well, I'm gonna become like very prudish or whatever. I, I would even argue, I would even write an essay. I would even do a research paper. I would even submit a scholarly article to argue that um, actually abstaining and being celibate helps you be even more sensual and it helps you tap into the sexual energy within yourself in a different way. I would say in a way that's even better than when you are vibrating on a very low frequency or when you are just giving so much of yourself to people that you might never interact with again and who didn't care very much for you in the moment or thereafter. And I always say this in all of my videos that are centered around abstaining and um, being celibate is that I am not here to judge anyone. I had sex for the first time at 18 years old. I will not be having sex again until I am married and I am 23 years old and at 21, I decided I want to abstain. And it's not to say that I've ever have had lapses and had to make different choices and apologize to myself. And um, it's not to say that this journey is peaches and cream or perfect. And it's also not to say that this journey is easy, but I do hesitate to ever say that it is hard or difficult because that's not really how I feel in my spirit. I don't think it's hard or difficult. I just think that it takes a lot of work because you are, you're unlearning a lot of things about yourself. And especially if you are an American and I can only speak really for the American experience of hypersexualization um, and just, a lot of things as a uh, dark-skinned little black girl and then as a now dark-skinned young black woman um, I can only speak to that American experience so it's just you have to unlearn a lot you have to take a lot of time and be very soft with yourself and you have to remind yourself that what it is that makes you sensual is not what can always be on display. And you don't need to feel bad about what is on display when you choose to be on display, if you want, because you are beautiful. People should look at you. You should look at you and love what you see because you are beautiful and you need to internalize that and you need to really feel that and believe it you can't just be saying it to yourself in the mirror it, it needs to actually be what you feel and believe and i just want people to know that <sighs> this is a journey and you have to be dedicated to it but if you walk this path you're gonna feel so good. You're gonna feel so good. You're gonna feel so good. And so please remember that sensuality just means to experience your senses and to always give yourself that pleasure and enjoyment, whatever that is. If that means getting an extra piece of food when you order out, you do that. That's being sensual, that's sensuality. You know what I'm saying? Investigate and interrogate words more, but also investigate and interrogate your your relationship with that word and what you associate it with. And then investigate and interrogate why you associate that word with those things. Think about what has been displayed to you. Think about what was taught to you about that word. That's what I mean when I say when you enter into a vow of celibacy, when you do decide to abstain, you have to think about everything that was taught to you that pushed you in a direction that you were not ready for um and that also that's how i feel about myself and my journey so i'm speaking about me and if it relates to you amazing let's build a community if it doesn't relate to you that's okay this message is not going to relate to everyone but you know pushed you into a path that you were not quite ready for and so you decided to say 
I'm going to stop walking this path and cross the street and take a new one because I want to feel so much better about this experience. I want to feel so much better about what I'm sensing. I want to feel so much better when I am experiencing my senses, every single one of them, because I want to experience my senses in such a way that it is, it's beautiful and it makes me feel calm. So that's all I wanted to say, and I hope it made sense. I hope I wasn't like rambling or something like that. I was trying to give y'all the real, real, and I don't script out these videos or anything. I literally just have an idea, and I sit down and I film, and I told you guys I really want to be like Shameless Maya in the sense that I want to develop that discipline to upload every single day, to film every single day, just to get into the routine of it because I really like doing this, but. I don't have a crew, you know, I'm doing this by myself. Uh, one day I will have an amazing production team and this will blossom into everything I intend for it to blossom into. But as I'm working towards that, I have to, I have to get the discipline. I have to, I gotta get everything in order. So uh, I do this every day and I come to you, I come to you in the moment every single day and I try to edit as minimally as possible because I really want to give you guys like exactly where I am in that moment because we're walking a journey and a path together and there's no like erase button in real life so I try to keep it as real as real can be. If you haven't already make sure you like comment and subscribe my name is Winter. I'm just so happy you came over to the side and there's no comments with me. And like I said, like, comment, and subscribe, or don't, it's your life. I'm just glad you came over to this side of the internet. It's been a couple minutes with me. Thank you.